Welcome to another Gamer GX review, and in this review I will be talking about the Wii exclusive No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle. No More Heroes 2 was released in January 26, 2010 and is the sequel to the 2008 game No More Heroes. Made by Grasshopper Manufacturer, the game takes place three years after the first game and you continue to play as Travis Touchdown, who was ranked as the number one assassin, but now is ranked 51st. You have to work your way up the ladder again and claim your rank as the number one assassin. So I will go through four categories, graphics, sound, gameplay, and replayability, so let's take a closer look at No More Heroes 2 Desperate Struggle. No More Heroes has a very unique graphical style and is truly one of the best looking games on the Wii. The game mixes amazing style shaded graphics with classic 8-bit era graphics and it just works great. With a very steady frame rate, slicing and dicing has never looked better on the Wii, and No More Heroes has an amazingly unique personality to it, which is unmatched. The game does run smooth most of the time, but it still has the odd slowdown and frame rate issues, but they aren't as distracting this time. Overall, the graphics are fantastic and get a 9 out of 10. Damn, is it my turn yet? Uh, anybody work here? This is taking forever! Open the gate so I can kick some ass! This is one of the best parts about No More Heroes. It has a great personality and is very funny. Travis Touchdown is just a class act and without him the game wouldn't be right. He's arrogant, sexist, and just too damn funny and is truly one of my favorite characters ever. All the assassins have their own unique personalities to them and bring a great variety to the game. But the goons in the game are not. Sharing a lot of the same moans and, and screams, the goons aren't very varied, while they are still great targets to kill. No More Heroes also place, displays some great music, still staying, staying true to the music and sound from No More Heroes 1, but this time the 8-bit music is just awesome and really brings back memories of playing the good old Nez. So on that note, No More Heroes displays amazing sound and gets a 9 out of 10. So this is where No More Heroes really improves over the first. This time instead of a clunky and annoying open world in No More Heroes 1, we have a well working and organized menu system and truly is a huge step up from the first game. The menu is easy to navigate and makes everything easier and more enjoyable to do. Another new addition is the minigames, and now they are all designed as 8-bit minigames and it's just awesome. Some minigames work better than others and the scorpion catching game is the only one that bugged me, having very clunky controls and camera. No More Heroes still follows the same formula as the first when it comes to the fighting, and it still works. Hacking and slashing is very smooth, rewarding, and a little crazy at times. The boss battles are also still great, and big mech battles are awesome. The game still suffers from some camera issues during battles and can cause you to lose control sometimes, but overall the gameplay is a lot smoother this time and it works much much better than the first, and gets an 8.5 out of 10. The main story can be beaten about 10 to 12 hours, but No More Heroes offers more than just mindless killing. The 8-bit minigames are addicting and make you lose hours playing them and trying to collect money to buy new clothes and weapons for Travis. You can even make your fat cat Gene lose some weight or go work out at the gym. The game has plenty to offer, but you can only play so many minigames and collect so many things and eventually the minigames will get boring. So No More Heroes will score an 8 out of 10 on replayability. That was Queen? Wait, who was that? Um, uh, who? That person? Uh, nobody! He's just the, uh... So No More Heroes is shaping up to be one of my favorite franchises on the Wii, and is a series that should not be missed. Just because it isn't Mario or Zelda doesn't mean you shouldn't pass this gem up. With a hilarious personality, amazing graphics and sound, and some amazing 8-bit minigames, and just overall very fun to play gameplay, this game is one of the best the Wii has to offer, and scores an 8.6 out of 10. This has been a Gamer GX review. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching. Hold it, you violence-loving bastards! Before you start your desperate struggling, you should drop a nice save.